If you're wondering whether or not you should get a PhD in environmental engineering, here are a few things to consider. Now before I get into the video, I want to be completely straightforward with you and tell you guys that I do not have my PhD. So I can't say that I regret it or anything because I never went through the process. I don't have one. I didn't go through that whole experience. But honestly, I'm glad I didn't. Just thinking about it, if I did decide to pursue a PhD, I'd probably still be in school right now if I were ever in that situation. Realistically, I may be near the end of the program, so I'd probably just be graduating with a PhD maybe at the, by the end of this year, and I'd be starting looking for jobs. So anyway, I want to explain why I didn't get a PhD, why I didn't decide to pursue one, more than likely why you shouldn't get one. At least just based off my own experience, it was better for me to not go that route. And maybe as you hear my story and my experience, you might be in the same boat and just wondering whether or not you should get one. And since we're in the same boat, you might think, oh, probably because you experienced this and I'm thinking about the same thing, it's probably best for me also to not pursue my PhD. But I don't want to discourage anyone from like pursuing higher education, so to each their own. This is just my story and my experience. And hopefully you enjoy it and get something out of it. So I'm going to take you back to the very beginning. So I started off college back in 2012 as a freshman majoring in chemistry. And the sole reason why I majored in chemistry wasn't because I love science or because I love chemistry back in high school. No, it was because my parents wanted me to go towards the medical route. They wanted me to go towards the medical field and become a doctor like, you know, all Asian parents out there. So being the young and lost 18 year old that I was, I said, you know, sure, fine, why not? I might as well just major in chemistry. You know, I wasn't even too hard in high school, so this could be an okay major. And so throughout my entire four year journey of undergraduate college, I majored in chemistry and stuck with it. Turns out, actually, I enjoyed it. I know for a fact that I would have hated biology, and honestly, I probably wouldn't even know what other major to choose from. I really enjoyed science, and I know that I would not enjoy things like social science and the arts. Always in the back of my mind, I thought about employment because, you know, after graduating from college, eventually you're gonna have to find a job. And I knew in general that it'd be harder for me to find a job if I was in the social science or the arts category compared to if I was in like the science, you know, field. And don't get mad at me if I'm saying this because honestly, you know it's true. At least at the time of me filming this. And so I didn't switch to engineering because I was too afraid of engineering. I didn't want to switch like in the middle of my second year or third year and have to like basically start over again. I had to catch up on all these classes when I was already, you know, midway through chemistry taking all these advanced chemistry classes. And so stopping halfway through was just, it didn't make sense. So I stuck with chemistry the entire four years. But even though I enjoyed chemistry, I mean, it wasn't easy. Yeah, I struggled in classes too. I didn't fail any per se, but I mean, like a C is still considered failing in terms of like Asian standards. So as a chemistry major, you get exposed to a lot of classes in lab, but I wanted a more applicable lab experience. And so I started looking for undergraduate research positions at my school. And thankfully I found one in the chemical engineering department where we were just looking at little microbes in vegetables. Yeah, I know, right? You basically eat these things. And so that was my first taste of what it was like researching in the engineering field. And after the project finished, I was just thinking, oh wow, you know, that was pretty fun. I felt like even though I was a student, young and dumb, I could actually accomplish something. I actually felt smart for once. Even though it wasn't my research project, just the fact that I contributed to something greater than myself it made me feel pretty good. And so that made me want to like advance my education and go on and pursue like my master's or PhD. And besides just like wanting to contribute to academia and research, of course I always thought about jobs and, um, and employment. Eventually I'll have to finish school, whether it be bachelor's or master's or PhD, you're eventually gonna stop. You know, you can't beat around the bush and hide from responsibilities forever. Eventually you're gonna have to grow up, leave the comfort of your dorm or apartment, and no longer have that defined schedule of classes waiting for you the next morning. You're gonna be working one day. And so I hear all these stories and statistics about how if you graduate with a higher degree, you're probably gonna get paid more. And so that was like a double win for me. And so if I go on to pursue like this higher education, then not only do I graduate with a master's or PhD doing what I love, which at the time was like being some sort of use to research, but I can also get paid more. So I mean, life is gonna be good. After some long thinking, that was when I truly decided, you know, I'm gonna go for my master's or my PhD. And so begins the journey. I began researching like, what do you need to do and graduate with to go on and apply for graduate school? So first off, you need like a high GPA, you need a good GRE score, you need three strong letters of recommendation and like a compelling application essay. But I mean, yeah, I didn't have any of that. One, my GPA sucked. So let's face it, science is hard. Two, my GRE scores were like the most generic average scores you could ever get. Literally the bare minimum and you know, that was me. 
The letters of rec, I mean, I could probably say that was the only thing that got me in. I did get one from like the Dean of Engineering, and that was because like my research project, the one who oversaw that project was the Dean of Engineering herself. And so that probably saved my life and more than likely was the only reason why I got into this program. And lastly, my essay, I mean, it was just so bad, I don't even want to read it. It just felt so random and off topic. So, I mean, if you're hearing this, make sure that your essay is actually on topic and you're answering the prompt. Be compelling, you know, have emotion. But regardless of whatever I had, you know, no matter how bad my scores were, my essays, I was still like compelled to get into school. So I applied to the master's and PhD program to like seven different schools. And you know what? I got rejected from all of them except one. So yeah, literally the only reason why I didn't decide to pursue my PhD was because I got rejected. I didn't get accepted to any of them except one master's program. I know, right? Sorry you have to wait for the grand horrible finale, but I mean, that's the truth. In the end, I got rejected from all of them. So if that makes you feel better, then hey, we're in the same boat. It's okay to get rejected. You might apply, think that you're gonna get in immediately. You might try to, your best to put in, you know, the best effort into your application. But in the end, if you get rejected, like, don't worry about it. Although I am glad that I got to experience the whole master's program and you know I graduated from that. Of course I'm a bit upset and sad and angry and disappointed in myself because I didn't have any options. I didn't have a choice. I could have just either graduated with my bachelor's and be done with it, maybe start looking for jobs, or I could have just gone into that one school that accepted me. Deep down, if I did get accepted into a PhD program, I'm sure I would have chosen that school. I would have gone if I got accepted. But obviously everything sounds good on paper until you're actually living through it. It only took me like 1.5 years to graduate with my master's and if I did get into this PhD program and I did decide to pursue it, it'd probably take me like 5 or more years. So because I graduated from the master's program pretty fast, I was able to start my you know, professional career pretty early in life compared to other classmates who got into the PhD program and you know decided to stay with that. So again, had I gone into that PhD program, I'd probably still be in school. I would have zero work experience besides maybe whatever academia and work related thing that they try to put on me. But to me, that work experience that I got after graduating from my master's is much more valuable than like school. So the takeaway key point from this video is that Throughout all of this, there's really only two paths. One route in your life is that you actually pursue this PhD program, and the other one is that you don't. And both will have drastically different outcomes of your life. Of course, each decision will have its ups and downs, so if you got rejected and you just went on to pursue with your normal life, yeah, you might have missed out on some things. It has its own opportunity cost. You'll sacrifice like five or more years of your life to get this PhD, while in your other life, if you decide to not pursue the PhD, you would have been out of school for five years. So imagine, if you're a student watching, just being free and not having to be in school. I mean, you've been in school your entire life up to this point, and then now it just stopped. You're tired of it, and you just want to get away. And after graduating from college, it finally happened. Would you be happy, or would you be sad? Do you even know what you'd be doing after graduating? And so that's what I realized. I've been able to trade in like about four years of my life not having to go to school and trading that in for a work experience. And again, at least to me, those four years of work and life experience, ups and downs in those four years, that was way more beneficial than what I might have expected to have gone through if I had chosen that PhD. But then again, I wouldn't know because I never went through the process. I can't really compare it because I only had one outcome to my life. It's just a lot of back and forth what if scenarios going on in my head right now. But I mean, what's done is done. And at this moment, I don't want to go back to school. I don't think I'll ever want to go back to the whole schedule like school. I don't mind learning, but I don't want to go through the whole grading system. You know, just reminiscing about what I went through in undergrad and for my master's program. It was fun and it was good, but it's not something I would want to relive again. All right, so, I mean, that was my story. That's the reason why I did not decide to pursue a PhD. Your story might be the same. Who knows, maybe you're actually the smart one who got into the program and are tough enough to go through the rigors of five years or more of the PhD program. And again, if you're watching this and you're younger than me, and you're like leading on the fence whether or not you should decide to go for this route, just know that sometimes, even though you want to go through this route, you might get rejected like me. Or if you do, realize that you'll have to sacrifice five more enduring years just to get that PhD degree. And again, I don't want to discourage anyone who wants to pursue this route, but that's my story. And in the end, honestly, you don't even need a PhD to become an environmental engineer. For the most part, if you get your PhD, you're going to be working in academia. So you're going to be a professor or doing research projects. 
And if that's what you love to do, then all to you. All right, so that's all I have for this video. If you liked what I said, go ahead and share, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.